All right, everybody, we will get started. So thank you for joining us today on this sunny afternoon. We feel thrilled that anybody's choosing to stay in after their long work day and join us for this focus on social emotional learning for primary literacy learners. So this is one of our favorite content areas to do workshops on. It was really hard for Jen and I to scale it down to just fill up only one hour. So we'll try and make it action packed and as interactive as possible and have you leave by 4.15 with some strategies and resources and book ideas to try out with your students. So first of all, I wanted to acknowledge that we are gathering virtually today from many different traditional indigenous territories across BC. And we thank our hosts for this land that we're working, living and playing on. And we're very grateful to be gathered here with you today. So thank you. And if you haven't met us before, I'm Lisa. I'm the program manager from Poppy and a teacher consultant. And I'm co-presenting this afternoon with my lovely colleague, Jen. So you've got our contact info there if you wanna email us. And hopefully you got our, our pre-workshop email that had the handouts um, linked out on it as well as this Zoom link. Uh, but if you didn't and you wanna have a look, you can get it at poppy.ca. And another cool thing Jen just set up for us you can also scan that QR code if you have a device. So phone or a tablet, you can scan that and access the e-handout on another device if you'd like. We are recording the session and we will have it up on our Poppy YouTube channel probably by the end of next week once we've got it edited and captioned. And there are closed captions available during the session that's available to you in the Zoom toolbar if you would like to use them. So just to make sure you're in the right place, what we're looking at are literacy activities and stories and texts that make those intentional connections and provide opportunities for students to experience and delve into social emotional learning so that we can support their sense of well being and belonging and open up some reflection and conversations around how we're feeling and how we're coping with things, especially during a pandemic, and what resources and strategies we can use to comfort ourselves and manage our emotions and deal with stress, and also ways that we can incorporate those reflections and thoughts into some literacy activities, into some reading and some writing experiences. So how we'll do that is through a little bit of the theory we'll share with you on the why and the research on uh, some good brain research and research on hormones and cortisol and stress reactions and all of those fun things. We'll do some modeling and demonstrations to show you what, what these skills and strategies can look like in practice and then give you opportunities to engage with us and with everyone else, reflect and chat and share. Uh, a lot of that will be using the chat box as well. So feel free to type your questions and wonderings and connections in there as we go. And we wanted to start by having you do this mood meter and check in with how you're feeling today. So if you've been in one of our workshops before, you've probably seen this. And this is something that we adapted from the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence. And the adult version that they have has, I think, 400 emotion or feeling words in each of these four quadrants. So you've got red and blue and green and yellow. And we made a primary version with just a few and some cute emoji faces. Um, but what we want you to notice are the two axes here. So you've got on the left, low enjoyment. Towards the right, it's higher enjoyment. And then at the bottom, low energy up to higher energy. And so Mark Brackett is a director of that Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence. And when he's, I'm taking a book, I'm in a book club with him right now. And every session we start with this. And uh, I thought it was really powerful that he said, the goal isn't always to be in the yellow. Like that's nice, but it's not realistic. What we want to do and validate for our students is any feeling that you're feeling is okay. The full range from pleasant feelings to less pleasant, high energy to low energy. We wanna be able to name them. So have that emotional vocabulary for describing our feelings. And then we also want a toolkit of strategies for how to comfort and soothe and reassure ourselves and regulate ourselves when we're struggling with something. So if you take that moment and think in on how you identify what color zone, which quadrant do you feel like you're in right now? Maybe even if you wanna land on a word, an emotion word, I'm gonna launch a poll, an anonymous poll, and I will ask you all to weigh in. And really you just need to identify which color zone you feel 
best represents how you feel right now. And we'll leave that up for about 30 seconds and then I'll share the results. Oh, we're already at 60%, 70% just about. You're amazing. Lots and lots of green. So high enjoyment, low energy. That's kind of a nice chill zone to be in. Okay. I'll end that and share the results. Well, I'm wondering how much sunshine has to do with that today. <laughs> I wonder. Maybe yes. just a bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Spring feels a little bit closer than it did last week. Um, so part of our doing this is to check in with how you are as we would with students in a classroom, but also just for you to have that check in on how you're doing and also to honor how you're feeling and to meet your needs as we go through this hour. So do whatever you need to do for self care. If you need to step away from the screen, get some water, have a stretch, fresh air, please do whatever you need to feel good and honor how you're feeling. And uh, we hope that at the end, you're feeling just as good as you are now, maybe a little bit more. Um, we'll have some more music for you. We'll try and keep your energy levels up and hope that you enjoy the workshop. Love this, this quote that you found, Lisa. Yeah. Almost yeah. everything will work if you unplug it for a few minutes, including you. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> yes, some lovely rainbow colors there. Yes. So a little bit longer, you'll be able to unplug it for 15. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's t start with taking a look at the why. So why are we focusing our, our attention this afternoon for a whole hour on social and emotional learning? Why are why is social emotional learning or SEL such a buzz right now um, in our education system? So we're gonna take a look at those kind of questions when we explore what is social emotional learning and why do we want to know more about it? So <clears throat> if you take a look at social emotional learning is how we manage emotions, um, achieve goals, have empathy for others, maintain relationships, make decisions. Doesn't that sound like what we do in our primary classrooms every day? that we focus on. So what we really want to point out is that we are already doing social emotional learning on a daily basis with our students in our classrooms, especially at the primary level. Because when I look at those um, facets of understanding, that's primary, that's primary grades, that's what we do. But we really want to focus today on making um, some explicit relationships uh, between our literacy learning and our social emotional learning competencies. So we'll, we'll, even though we know that we are doing this on a daily basis, we'll make that a little bit more explicit so our students know how to um, notice, name, and nurture their, their own social emotional competencies. And we want to do this not only because our students will be successful in school, but these are things that we need to be successful in life. So it's incredibly important for us to continue to look at this social emotional learning all the time, but especially during a pandemic. So I'm going to um, share the CASEL video, the Collaborative for Academic Social and Emotional Learning, acronym CASEL, and they're going to explain what is social emotional learning. Um, CASEL is like our mothership of everything cell. So they have uh, an amazing amount of resources. If you want to check out their website, they even have COVID related resources there for you to check out. And we've used a lot of their research in building this presentation for you today. So I'll just uh, let that video play itself. Learning is magical. She's so emphatic. Like it. Okay, so now what we're going to take a look at now that we know all of the benefits of having social emotional learning as part of our daily routine that we do with our students. We're going to take a look at why it's important to have um, explicit experiences for our students to give them tools to manage the role of stress and trauma um, that may come into their lives. 
So I'm just going to touch on some of Stuart Shanker's work here on the brain. And um, what we want to focus on is usually, generally, we're in the blue area of our brain. That's where area is being stimulated. Like right now, we would, most of us, I think, would probably be in that blue area. So we're using language, we're thinking about, we're um, critical thinking, reflective thinking, we're pretty self-aware of what's happening right now. Now, when we have a perception of danger, our limbic alarm goes off, which is in our limbics, um, the red area of our brain. And when that happens, a few things happen. First, um, we have to figure out what, what is dangerous in our environment right now, but what we're not doing when we're in that red system, we're not having uh, reflective thinking, we're not problem solving. We are probably having even trouble with short term memory at that point. So we are just thinking about the danger part. And um, if we stay there too long, that's where the problems happen. So I'll uh, just touch on that a little bit too on the next screen here. I think Stuart Shanker called that the lizard brain when you go back into that ancient flight or fight, didn't he? Yes, yes, thanks Lisa, yeah. for sure. Um, so what happens when we know that our mind is definitely affecting, what happens in our mind affects a lot of different things in our body and at the forefront is learning. So that's why we need to be considering that, of course, with our students. So if we have a perception of danger and our limbic alarm goes off, our brains release cortisol, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about in a moment, but basically our body naturally produces cortisol, but when it's um, given in high doses, we can have um, uh, we can have trouble sleeping, we can have um, uh, trouble maintaining weight, all of those different things can happen in our body. Memory is an issue then. So all of those things start to happen. Our heart rate rises, we become really focused on that fight or flight or freeze. Um, the problem is that our brains haven't evolved enough to know the difference between emotional and physical danger. So whether I'm hearing my parents fighting in the room next door or there's girls in my classroom that are saying really mean things about me. Uh, my body's going to react, react as much as if I'm seeing a bear, right? So that's kind of the, the issue with our emotional and physical danger. Now, once the danger is gone or our, our brains perceive the danger to not be apparent in our life right now, our systems go back to normal. We go back to our blue brain and we're thinking logically about things again. The problem comes in when we have this long-term or ongoing stress or trauma that is leading to continuously high levels of cortisol. So again, that's gonna like really affect our body in really negative ways to have those high doses of cortisol. But one thing that it's also gonna do is affect the brain's ability to produce serotonin, which is um, also known as our mood neurotransmitter. So our bodies naturally produce serotonin and we get little boosts of it when we exercise, when we um, accomplish a goal, even when we get a hug, we get little boosts of serotonin. But when our body's not able to produce that serotonin, then it really weighs on our ability to manage our emotions and it can lead to depression, anxiety. So the point of all that is <laughs> that we need to give our students the toolkits, the tools accessible for them to not fall into that cycle so that they can start to manage um, when they are feeling different feelings and um, how to cope with those feelings and how to break that cycle. <laughs> so also what is important that we know about research on well-being and stress is that when our when we are feeling stress as teachers, uh, our students pick up on that and it does affect their, their stress levels and their well being. So, what we wanna do now is check in with you and uh, we would like you to choose one question to answer in the chat box of these questions that are listed on this slide. And what that's gonna do is kind of reframe your brain to be thinking about something that is very positive and it's going to give you a little boost of serotonin that we all need. 
So I'll give you a moment to answer those questions or one of those questions. And thanks to Laura, I'm just seeing in the chat, she um, letting us know that Headspace is offering a free year subscription for educators. And so they have mindfulness Ooh. and meditation resources for adults and for children. Excellent. Okay, so as you are answering those questions, we will just continue to, to talk a little bit more, but we really want you to have that time, that focus for the rest of the session. Do you want to say anything mm -hmm. more about that, Lisa? Well, no, I was just Lots going to say that mine was um, similar to Roberta. I think it's that moment when you see the light go on for a student, when you've helped something click in them that they, they get it and how excited they are. And it really is like a light bulb moment. That is so satisfying. And it's really a wonderful thing to be a part of. Yeah. So thank you. So yeah, scroll back and check and see what people are writing. There's lots, lots and lots here. Uh, so we will keep, keep going. And so I know our title here says why books, the core competencies and social emotional learning. But I was just thinking, I was reflecting that maybe even instead of books that could say stories, because we have got a couple of videos here that show powerful stories as well. And if you don't already, we would encourage you to think about short videos that you could bring in to show students other characters who might be grappling with some challenges or some obstacles or some ethical situations that they need to navigate. And so part of the key and the joy with, with story is they're really wonderful starting points for reflection and conversation about life's experience and other common relatable situations that kids need to navigate and gives it a little bit of a safe distance platform to talk about those feelings and the experiences and strategies and struggles when they're happening to a character in a story rather than to ourselves. So, and students can see themselves and relate in the struggles that some of the characters are going through in the books and stories that we share with them. So we can be intentional about the books that we're sharing as read alouds and mentor texts to be able to support and intentionally nurture and name, like Jen talked about, competencies that we're wanting to highlight and social emotional skills we're wanting to support in our students. So we're going to start with a video, The Don't Worry Book by Todd Parr. So he gets to read his own book. We couldn't compete with that, I don't think, Jen. And he wrote this book, <laughs> Pandemic, and it's even more timely now, I think. Um, but what we want you to do, this would be if we were all together in a classroom of a hundred of us all sitting on a big giant carpet, um, we would pause and ask you what you noticed as we went through the book and we'd stop and we'd point to illustrations and maybe some of the text and get you to notice themes or voice or illustration or language, humor. Um, so as we go, please feel free, use the chat box to type in what you're noticing or if there's anything that you appreciate or enjoy about Todd Parr's style and uh, how he reads the book. He's so fantastic. So I know, and if I was in a classroom right now, I would probably talk through this with my students, have some conversations, some brainstorming of strategies, and I would have my students make their own Don't Worry book, and they could include strategies that work for them, what they can do to comfort themselves when they're feeling different ways. And I think also part of the beauty and the value in the book is that these are all relatable, everyday, common things. They're not too, too specific, but I think they're things we can all relate to as adults and kids. And the humor and the repetition and the voice, all of those as well, make it quite charming and accessible. So ruler is an approach that you can use in looking at managing our emotions and looking at social emotional learning so that you can see there the r-u-l-e-r -E spell out these different things this is what we're wanting our students to be able to do and we're wanting to provide the scaffolded support for them to be able to do that with modeling and demonstration and in inviting them to be self-reflective and in those conversations about first of all recognizing emotions understanding cause and consequence so that labeling and vocabulary also how to express themselves effectively and safely and know what they need to do to shift their emotions if they're feeling uncomfortable. So we'll explore that a little bit more as we keep going. Um, but we're gonna do something specific really to COVID right now. So a way to manage feeling worried during COVID, um, and this is something that you could do with your students as well, 
So writing and drawing pictures about feeling worried. So I feel worried when everyone is wearing masks. My mom and dad watch the news all the time. I can't play with my friends. Adults keep talking a lot about people dying. It's all quite scary. And, and so for us, what we want you to do, think about something that you feel worried about. Just one thing you feel worried when and get ready to type that into the chat box or you can type it in, but don't hit enter just yet. We're going to give you a 30 second music timer. And so even if you finish typing in 10 seconds, just wait till the music finishes. We'll get you all to hit enter at the same time when the music's over and that will be a waterfall of everybody sharing and you can look in the chat box to see what other people have shared. So just one thing that you feel worried about right now during COVID. So the flip side of this now is to look at choosing a calming strategy for if and when we do feel worry and picking something that works for you. So for example, when I feel worried, I can calm myself by doing yoga, reading a book, going to a quiet area, or talking to an adult. So again, here, if you want to pick one strategy, a calming activity that makes you feel better when you're worried, we'll get you to type that into the chat box and wait to hit enter until that music ends and we'll give you 30 seconds and then we can, we'll see everybody's and do a share. Oh yeah, lots of going outside, pets, nature, music, FaceTiming with family, friends. Yeah, taking a break from the media and the news and Twitter and all of that. It can be hard to look away sometimes, but it's, it's always beneficial. I know for myself, I find I can stay calmer. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of that. And again, we invite you to think, is this something that you could do and do some brainstorming activity as a class with your students about different emotions that might be more unpleasant and, and a challenge for them? So brainstorming situations that cause them and then also strategies for calming. And you saw in the video Castle's Wheel for Social Emotional Learning, and we made a poppyized version of it. And if we had a full day together, we would spend time diving into each of these five different aspects of social emotional learning. But because it's a short after school session, we're just going to touch briefly on some of them. But what we always like to highlight is that it all starts with self awareness. So you can't regulate, you can't manage, you can't deal with feelings and emotions and stresses that you're not aware of. And so that foundational first piece really needs to be helping to support our students, have that awareness about themselves. So sort of the, the, the Stuart Shanker, the self reg and the self control. I know a lot of times it gets reduced down to just behavior management. Um, but really, it's about knowing what you need. Do you need a fidget toy? Do you need quiet? Do you need to be near somebody when you're reading or writing, um, those sorts of things, sensory issues as well. But also, did you have a crummy sleep and you maybe just need a bit of more time to, to gear up to do your work today? So getting our kids to start checking in, even doing something like the mood meter, having them start to think, how am I? Besides just good, bad, happy, sad, and expanding their emotional vocabulary. And then also looking at strategies for how to support and comfort and soothe themselves and empower them. So then looking at that's a self-management piece and then also relationship skills, social awareness. How do we then interact with our peers in ways that are productive and fun and safe and healthy and make responsible decisions about those relationships, about our friendships and keeping our body safe and then also with an outward look at the environment and the world. So being global citizens and taking care of our community and our environment. These are the bookmarks we made showing uh, a few different bullet points of what these five areas look like and what some skills are or some competencies across these five different areas. So you can see there's a variety there. They're pretty straightforward. 
These could be something that you shared with your students, depending on the age or what your conversations are in the classroom around social emotional learning. Um, but again, as primary teachers, this is something we're doing through a lot of our days, much of the time anyways, with the core competencies coming in those few years ago, it really is just allowing us to bring it to the forefront and talk about it more explicitly. And we want our, our students to be well versed in that. And you think about if we'd had this kind of element woven into our education back starting in kindergarten, you just think how our journey might have been different through up through graduation of high school and beyond having these these skills for taking care of ourselves and navigating life and relationships and challenges, making good decisions. Um, so I think it's really beneficial for our students. So what we want you to notice in this video, what SEL facets do you see either the, well, the child, but also you might notice what the instructor does as well. So this is really adorable and feel free to share any noticings or connections in the chat box. <laughs> so adorable. That always makes me laugh. Thank you for entering what you noticed into the chat. So yeah, persistence, growth mindset, resilience, perseverance, persistence, celebration, modeling, goal setting, learning from mistakes, uh, focus, supportive instructor, definitely modeling, pride, persistence. Lots of wonderful competencies there, thank you. Thank you. Yes, that's a wonderful video that really highlights that relationship aspect um, where the, the boy just felt so safe, I think, to keep going and keep trying, knowing that, you know, he was, he was supported. So we're going to dive in and take a look at one of the facets this afternoon, as Lisa mentioned, we're going to start, we're going to look at self-awareness because it is one that we would recommend starting with because as Lisa said, our students need to understand their own feelings, their own strengths and limitations before they can necessarily um, know how to manage those and also see those in others. So we're going to take a look at diving into um, to one of the the books that is recommended here by Miss Olivia, Live Bits. If you haven't checked out Live Bits, it's um, amazing. She's going to rule the world someday, we think. Um, yeah, so she's going to give us a book recommendation that we'll check out, see what she says. Um, so this is a, an activity that you can try later on um, or, and then try with your students, of course. If we were all together in the same room, of course, we would be doing this right now all together. Um, but we don't have enough time to send everyone out to find pictures of their favorite things. But what you can do is think about the story that we just read. You can, um, after the workshop, go for a short walk and discover your favorite things. You can take a picture of them through your iPhone or iPad, and you can describe why it's your favorite thing, just like the, um, the girl in the story did. You can try out different technology apps and different things to make this um, accessible to your students. You can have it as low tech or as high tech as you would like. And um, it's something to allow our students to really notice what is happening with their, what is happening right now, how they can focus on the now and what that does to our brain because what it does to our brain is it brings us back to that blue brain area where we can be calm, calmer and um, be able to manage our emotions better. So I'll show you a couple of examples. So this is uh, using the Skitch app that you'll see in a moment in the tech tools. So this is my favorite tree because it is all lit up. And I have to admit that I still have my Christmas lights up. That is my favorite tree and I'm okay with it. <laughs> and these are my favorite cuddlers because they keep me warm when I'm working and these are my two cats uh, Pix and Paprika and they're hanging out in my office on my office chair right here so my favorite cuddlers so you can see how low tech or high tech you can go with this kind of activity here are some um, apps to try out if you'd like to get more familiar with what's out there if you wanted to bring anything like that into working with your students. 
And we also have designed this activity to have differentiated access points for primary students. So it can go, um, so you can have all of your students take part in this activity in some way or another, going all the way from our early beginning writers all the way down to an extension where um, your students can actually describe how um, focusing on your favorite things brings you to the now and how that's beneficial thinking about social emotional learning. So we thought we'd give you a little bit of a head start to be thinking about your favorite things. Again, a little bit of a serotonin boost. Well, so I'm, we're going to have you reflect on your favorites that help you stay in the now. It might be a place like Lisa has this beautiful picture of her, her now. Do you want to explain that, Lisa? Yeah, that's uh, out at UBC down at Rec Beach. And I'll try and get there after work if I can, if it's light enough to uh, catch the sunset. And then I find that really grounding and relaxing and helps me slow down and appreciate the moment and appreciate nature. Thank you. So your favorite now or your favorite thing might be a place, an object, a person, a pet, an activity. So we're gonna do again the waterfall share where you'll have 30 seconds. Um, on the timer to type, type in one of those things into the chat box and then press enter when the timer is finished and we'll get a waterfall of favorites from all of you. And then hopefully maybe you'll go find your favorite thing after the workshop and take a photo and have fun with this and have an exemplar to share with your students. Oh, this just makes me happy reading all these. <gasps> yes. Absolutely, puppies, reading fiction, gardening, holding my grandkids. Oh my goodness, love it. So. Yeah, lots of outdoors and family. Definitely, yes. Definitely, hopefully that was Thank inspiring. Thank you for sharing for that, yeah. Okay, so some other ways that you can integrate self-awareness into your classroom. I'll just touch on a few of these. So having that safe, um, creating that safe environment for our students to feel like they can explore their self-awareness and um, feel supported with that. You can also create visual resources to teach emotional vocabulary. That might be a new, like new vocabulary for our students to explore. You can highlight the, each child's abilities and talents so that they get to see um, themselves from your, through your eyes. And this is one of the most important, I think, is you can share personal experiences about you taking on and meeting challenges. So they get to understand that this is about being human. It's not about being a kid. It's about being human, that we encounter challenges and um, we cope with emotions. And this is just being human. Mm -hmm. I'll share a couple of book recommendations that are, um, are great to really bring self-awareness into the classroom. A few of my favorites, uh, Drafts Can't Dance, The Most Magnificent Thing-ish. Mm -hmm. There are a few of my favorites. Yeah, and Todd Parr really is, his collection of books really, you could just study all of those for your social emotional learning and core competencies too. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you, Jen. So Karen Nimi, who we saw in the video, she's the president and CEO of Castle. We have a couple of quotes here for her, just highlighting how social emotional learning and connection is even more important at these times when we're physically distancing. So without being able to be close and hug and touch and high five, it puts us all more at risk for feeling isolated and alone and we're missing out on that comfort and that strategy for self-care that we no, normally we rely really Sorry. heavily on. So, and the other thing, so looking at the research, the importance and the science behind SEL will allow us weaving that into our literacy, weaving it into our classroom, allows us the opportunity to support our most vulnerable students. And so including ourselves at a time when we're feeling quite vulnerable. So hopefully you've, we've guided you through a few things. We started with the mood meter, Todd Parr's Don't Worry book. And then we did that activity on identifying stressors and things that make us feel worried. And then also identifying strategies for calming ourselves when we feel worried. Looked at that short video uh, with the little boy getting his white belt. 
So picking out SEL facets from a short video is always a nice way to mix things up from mentor text and read alouds. And then focusing in on Liv and her book review and the sharing of the book now and focusing in on our favorite things. So it's, I think what we really, it's hard these hour sessions after school, they're so fast and we get to touch on some of our favorite things in the key research. I just feel like there's never quite enough time to dig into it for something that's so important. So thank you for spending this time with us to navigate through the journey. And we know it's uh, so much of this is already happening in your classrooms. It's just that invitation to think about how can you intentionally choose opportunities for story, for reflection and conversation to help your students feel more equipped and more in touch with themselves and able to take care of themselves. This um, book club that I'm doing with Mark Brackett, who did the mood meter and he's a director at the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence. One of his quotes last week was, all learning is emotional. So even though we're calling this social emotional learning, really all of the learning that our students do, it is emotional and they're invested. And so if we can keep their well-being and their safety and their comfort at the forefront, we can do what we can so that they have those conditions in place for them to thrive and really take con have confidence to take risks and be their best selves as well. So whether you do that through books or video or story or writing or conversation, it really is worth every moment that you spend drawing your students' attention to it and supporting and nurturing it in your classrooms. Um, if there's something that you liked from the activities that we did today, one thing that you'd be most likely to try out in your classroom in the coming weeks, if you can enter that into the chat box, that helps us know what activities resonated and were popular with you in a nice big group like this. I think I'd probably do a Todd Parr unit in my class, a book study on Todd Parr. And I'm not a good artist, but I think I could draw in the style of Todd Parr. <laughs> and before you go, we are planning to offer another series of after school workshops starting in April after spring break. And Jen and I wanted to get some feedback and thoughts and suggestions from you on what topics you might be interested in um, seeing at an after school special. So what's a topic or a focus area that might draw you in? to sign up and attend another one of these. So maybe it's play-based literacy learning or oral storytelling, um, aspects of reading or writing, word work, anything related to that would be helpful for us. If you say something like chemistry 11, we're gonna be uh, not able to help yeah. you so much there. <laughs> <laughs> Not really in our wheelhouse. <laughs> so we're getting some good ideas in the chat box. That's very helpful. That's wonderful. Thank you. We'll go over those after. Thank you. Yeah. So here's a list of sources that we use to put the, um, the workshop together. So as you can see, all of the blue ones are live links that will take you out to other websites and the videos. Um, I think Todd, Bar Todd Parr does do quite a few read louds of his own books. So that's always something fun to show to your students as well to mix it up from you doing read alouds all the time. And, and castle.org, as Jen said, is a mothership and they have a, a wealth of, they've been doing the research for 40 years and they've got just such a wide array of resources that if you are interested, in exploring a little bit more, that would be a great place to start along with Stuart Shanker's work with the Merit Center. So our contact info is here if you wanna follow up. If you do end up doing a NOW activity with your, either on your own or with your students, we'd love to see pictures or hear stories. So please always feel free to email us and reach out and share connections or wonderings or things you've tried with your students or to let us know if you have questions and you're looking for additional activities or resources. We can do our best to try to point you in the right direction. And um, yeah, we're gonna leave you with this short video about um, Pip, who's adorable. And before we start this, we just wanna say thank you so much for taking time on a sunny day for most of us. Sorry if you didn't have sun today. 
uh, after school and joining us. And we hope you enjoyed the session and are walking away with a few ideas for inspiration. And we hope that you take good care of yourselves. Thank you for being here.